इमेजिन वी हैव अ डेटा सेट विथ थाउजेंड डायमेंसन्स एंड वी वॉन्ट टू परफॉर्म सम ऑपरेशन ऑन इट लाइक ट्रेनिंग अ मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट वर्किंग विद सच हाई डायमेंशनल डेटा कैन बी एक्सट्रीमली टाइम कंज्यूमिंग एंड रिक्वायर अ लॉट ऑफ कंप्यूटेशनल पावर मेकिंग द इंटायर प्रोसेस स्लो एंड इनफिशियंट दिस इज वेयर पी सी ए और प्रिंसिपल कॉम्पोनेंट एनालिसिस कम्स इन टू प्ले पी सी ए टेक्स हाई डायमेंशनल डेटा एंड कंप्रेसिज इट बाई रिड्यूजिंग द नंबर ऑफ डायमेंशंस वाइल स्टिल प्रिजर्विंग मोस्ट ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कूड रिड्यूज अ थाउजेंड डायमेंशनल डेटा डाउन टू जस्ट टेन डायमेंशंस वाइल स्टिल रिटेनिंग नाइन्टी एट परसेंट ऑफ द ओरिजिनल इन्फॉर्मेशन दिस मेक्स कॉम्पिटिशन फास्टर चीपर एंड मोर इफेक्टिव ऑल विदाउट लूजिंग मच ऑफ द वैल्यूएबल डेटा Now imagine we have these data points and plot them on a two dimensional plane. You will notice that most of the data points are actually clustered together in a small region rather than being spread out everywhere. Similarly, in the higher dimensions, most of the data tends to be concentrated in certain regions rather than uniformly filling the entire space. So, wouldn't it be great if we could leverage this pattern and find a way to compress the data set by reducing its dimensions while still keeping the essence of the data intact well that's exactly what pca does pca identifies these patterns and helps us to represent the data in a simpler lower dimensional form without losing most of the valuable information let's dive into how pca works but before that let's first understand the idea of feature selection Imagine we have a data set with two features or two dimensions. Here features and dimensions mean the same thing. Now, if you look closely at feature X2, you will notice that the data points do not vary much. They are clustered very close to each other. On the other hand, the data points along feature X1 vary a lot more, meaning they are spread out. This spread is what we call variance. So, we can say that X1 has higher variance. while x2 has a lower variance if we plot these two features on a graph and project the data points onto their respective axis we can clearly see this difference feature x1 shows a wide spread whereas feature x2 is tightly packed what does this mean it tells us that feature x2 is not contributing much information to the data set because it does not capture much variation so even if we drop feature x2 and only keep x1 we won't lose much valuable information this process of identifying and removing less useful features is known as feature selection now let's modify our data set a little and plot these new data points this time you can clearly see that both features have significant variance This means we can't simply drop one feature like we did earlier without losing a significant amount of information. So, how do we deal with this kind of data set? Now, before we dive into the intuition of PCA, we first need to understand a very important concept, covariance. Covariance measures how two features relate to each other. In other words, how changes in one feature affect the other. The formula for covariance looks like this. where x bar and y bar are just the means of the two features however covariance by itself can be hard to interpret because its value depends on the scale of the data to make it more interpretable we standardize it by dividing by the standard deviations of both features this gives us the correlation coefficient which always lie between minus 1 and plus 1 if the correlation is close to 0 like in our first data set it means two features have little to no relationship If the correlation is close to positive one it indicates a strong positive relationship as one features increases the other tends to increase as well if the correlation is close to minus one it means there is a strong negative relationship as one feature increases the other decreases understanding covariance and correlation is crucial because pca relies on these relationships to find patterns in high dimensional data Now coming back to the graph what pca does is it tries to find an axis shown here in red onto which when we project our data points the variance of the projected data is maximized the amount of this variance is represented by the green brace 
So our task becomes finding the red axis that results in the largest green brace, meaning the maximum spread of data after projection. You can think of this process as somewhat similar to how we find a best fit line in linear regression. Mathematically, both aim to maximize variance, though PCA does it in a different context. In this case, it looks like this axis is perfect, as it captures the highest variation in the data. We call this axis PC1 or principal component 1. There will also be a second axis PC2, which is always perpendicular to PC1. We will discuss later how exactly we compute this, but for now, just understand that PC1 and PC2 are new axes, formed as linear combination of the original features. When we project the data points onto these new axes, you will notice that the spread is much larger along PC1 than PC2. This tells us that PC1 carries most of the important information about the dataset. So, in this example, we can keep only PC1 and drop PC2 effectively reducing the data from two dimensions to one, while preserving most of the information. Now for a d-dimensional dataset, there will be d such principal components and out of which we have to choose top k such that it captures the maximum information or variance. This is the core idea behind PCA. Now let's dive deeper into mathematics behind PCA. And of course, if you're not interested in the deep math, feel free to skip this part and just focus on the intuition we have already built. This section is for those who want to see how PCA is derived mathematically and why it works the way it does. Here we have a data set and the first step in PCA is to center the data around the mean. This means shifting the entire data set so that the mean point moves to the origin. This does not change the relative positioning of the data points. The shape, the spread, and distances between the points remain exactly the same. We are just repositioning the whole dataset. This step is crucial because PCA is all about finding the direction of maximum variance. If the data is not centered, the mean will act like a bias. We will see this in a moment. Mathematically, this step is done by finding the mean of the dataset and then subtracting that mean from every data point in the dataset. Now let's focus on a single data point for clarity. Pick a unit vector u, onto which we will project the data point xi. The projection of xi on u is given by the dot product of these two vectors, which is a scalar quantity. And the vector for the projected point is shown in green. Now let's convert this dot product into the standard matrix multiplication form, which is the same thing. If we look at the variance of the projected dataset, it will look something like this. Because we centered the data earlier, the mean is zero, so we don't need to subtract means in the formula. And there are a total of n data points in the dataset. Now let's simplify the squared term in this formula. Once we rearrange it a little, it transforms into a much cleaner form. The term inside the square brackets turns out to be nothing but the covariance of the data matrix and its transpose. This covariance matrix is simply a structured way to measure how each feature relates to every other feature in the dataset in a general d-dimensional space. Let's represent this covariance matrix with a capital C. And now we have our cost function, which is the variance that we need to maximize and a constraint that the vector u is a unit vector. This is mathematically represented like this. If you multiply the transpose of a vector matrix with itself, it should give one. This makes it a constraint optimization problem. To solve this, we use the Lagrangian method. This new combined expression is called the Lagrangian. Here, this part is our cost function that we need to maximize. And this part represents the constraint that the vector should remain a unit vector. The term lambda here is called the Lagrange multiplier, which balances the cost function and the constraint. To solve this problem, we take the derivative with respect to u and set it equal to zero. When you work this out, you will arrive at the eigenvalue equation, which is the foundation of PCA. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to solve this equation step by step. That's a whole different story. Instead, I will provide links to some excellent videos where you can learn the full details. Now, for now, to solve this, we rearrange it into a standard form by subtracting lambda times the identity matrix from C. 
giving us this form. This step is essential because it allows the equation to be properly solved in the matrix form. Next, we take the determinant and set it equal to 0. Solving this gives us d eigenvalues, where d is the total number of dimensions in the data set. Let's assume these eigenvalues are sorted from largest to smallest. Finally, for each eigenvalue, we plug it back into the equation and solve for the corresponding eigenvector. After normalizing these vectors, we get d unit vectors. These lambdas represent the variances sorted from highest to lowest. The corresponding unit vectors are the principal components associated with those variances. Now, we can obtain our new projected dataset by transforming the original dataset into the u directions, essentially projecting the data along the principal component vectors. But since our goal is dimensionality reduction, we don't need all d principal components. Instead, we select the top k principal component vectors, the ones corresponding to the largest variances and project the dataset only onto these top k directions. This way, we reduce the dataset to k dimensions while still retaining most of the important information. Now, if you want to reconstruct the original dataset from these k dimensions, you can do it by multiplying the projected dataset with the transpose of the u matrix. After that, you also need to add back the mean because we had subtracted it in the very first step. But remember, Fully recovering the original d-dimensional dataset from only k dimensions is not possible, since some information was lost during dimensionality reduction. Now, the choice of k largely depends on how much information you want to retain from the original dataset. One common approach is to sum the variances of the top k principal components and divide it by the total variance of all d components. This gives a ratio, often denoted by phi. You can then choose phi to be a value like 0.9 or 0.95, depending on how much information you want to preserve. For example, setting phi equals 0.95 means you retain 95% of the total variance using just the top k components. Now, for our 5 sample dataset, this process gives us two principal components, represented by red and blue vectors. To reduce the dataset from 2D to 1D, we can drop the blue component since it has lower variance and keep only the red component which captures the most important information. Now for the 2D dataset I showed earlier in the video, it will look something like this. The red component captures most of the variance. We will keep the red one and drop the blue one. For that 3D dataset, PCA will give us three principal components, red, green and blue. Here the green component represents 99.5% of the variance. So we can drop the other two and reduce the dataset from 3D to 1D while retaining almost all the information. So that's all about this video. See you in the next video.